Hello and welcome to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be looking at setting up the Thunderbird mail client that comes with standard with a lot of Linux operating systems. We're going to look at adding an email account, getting it to show notifications and just look at customization options that are available for Thunderbird. But before we proceed any further I'd like to thank my channel member Miss Love. They get early access to videos such as this one right here a little badge next to their name on both comments and live streams and they get priority response to comments so why not join them and get the same benefits as well anyway let's proceed into the video so this is indeed thunderbird so let's have a look from the start so i've just closed closing thunderbird doesn't actually close thunderbird and that's all right it minimizes it down so first thing we're going to do is open up Thunderbird. This is what Thunderbird looks like without anything logged in and so on and so forth. So there are a couple of choices you can do. Of course, this is a derivative, a product of, of Mozilla or of Firefox even. So this is your general uh, tool or general stuff and you can then import it or import uh, any Thunderbird client stuff from a mobile device which you can do from here if you wanted to in this case because we're doing it from fresh we're not going to so first thing we want to do is we want to look at look here as this is the home page as it were for thunderbird and this is what you'll see so in my case we're going to set up an email account as we can see here we don't need that but what we do need is we need email so i'm going to use my gmail address this is a publicly facing one it's that that's actually attached to this youtube account so i'm not too bothered about sharing it it's because i know for a fact that uh it is secured with a yubico security key meaning i know it's going to be safe so as we can see here this is the options that it gives us when it finds the information because this knows it is a gmail address as we can see configuration found in the mozilla isp database um, imap and pop3 uh, pop3 is the post post office protocol 3 and basically it just pulls it down your computer and stores it locally and it doesn't actually do any synchronization you have to manually trigger it Whereas the IMAP protocol, I can't remember what IMAP stands for off the top of my head, but basically that's just a constant synchronization as if you were just on the website inst instead of being in a bit of software. Uh, in this case, we're just going to, we'll do pop3. Again, uh, emails will go to pop.gmail.com and then SMTP for outgoings and SMT, SMTP stands for simple mail transfer protocol and POP stands for post, post office protocol so it will synchronize when you ask it to uh, other than that it's just the usual stuff um, the stack command did not mail server please go. okay as we can see it may or may not have had a problem but we'll find out as we can see we actually have our inbox here if we do that so the error that it's just given us has basically said this is not supported by well the pop protocol is not supported by gmail in actual fact it only supports um smt oh, not smt it supports imap not pop so how do we go about fixing this? Well, it would be there's a couple of ways around it. We could change the server information if we wanted to, or we could come here and go remove account. Yes, please remove the account. I said remove the account, please and thank you. I'll remove the account. Oh, if I paid attention to that one. And then try again. So new account. Email. And then feed it the email address. 
and then we go with IMAP instead of uh, POP3. IMAP is indeed supported, and as we can see, there were no issues here this time around. Looking up for, as we can see in the bottom of the screen here, looking up for everything. Uh, this There we go. So as we can see, I've just received 7,235 emails at the same time. So you, have, um, you will have to be careful whenever you... As we can see here, there are currently 7,235 emails. I'm not going to open that up just because that's my personal uh, email account. But let's look at some... As we can see here, it's just gone through every single one of them. Anything marked as important, start and sent mail. Oop. So, customization options. Well, for starters, if we have a look at settings, this is if we had, if we were using the chat functionality um, built in, whether you want to or not, it's entirely up to you. I'm not going to. But this is where where we go to so for example why there would be a search page functionality i'm not entirely sure uh, when thunderboard launches when thunderbird launches show the start page message area so the basic area these are just using uh, variables inside of the uh, percentage so locale with version being the version channel being the channel and os being os build id being build id so basically for me it would be uh, English, well, it'd be ENGB, yeah, it'd be ENGB, version B, whatever channel being release, and then Linux. Uh, layout, if we wanted to change the font to something uh, different, we could go for uh, Liberation Mono. For our window layout, if we wanted to, and then just increase it if we fancy that, but in this case, uh, no, there we go. So proportional. Uh, let's just do serif. Uh, Noto serif. Uh, let's choose something. We'll just choose something, something random. Uh, let's go for color emoji because why not? Uh, display most cons as graphics. Uh, if we wanted to, we could. But we could also just make uh, make them appear as regular instead but we'll just leave it as is because that's my personal preference um then time formatting as we can see here it's given us the app the application or software locale which in this case is engb uh engb or en underscore us for the united states but in my case i'm engb um use auto scrolling smooth scrolling so if we wanted it to jump around or not that's entirely up to this Files and attachments, if we wanted, for instance, uh, PDFs to be shown inside of uh, Thunderbird or use something different, we can then specify what we want different. Um, we can add tags to things such as, uh, as you can see, important work, personal to do, and later on, we could add more, change colors, and all that fun jazz. Uh, change how things look and how we go about looking at things. Uh, configuration for like networking as and the such. So, for example, how Thunderbirds connects to the internet, whether that be through a VPN, through well, through a proxy service. Um, how we want to set it up. If there's adding, well, as we can see here, enable DNS over HTTPS, proxy DNS. So just add, basically making it so if we had a proxy server set up, it would then run through them instead of going how else. Uh, as we can see here. We can just tell it to clear the cache because we don't want that. Uh, offline settings automatically detect, uh, automatically follow detected online state, manual state when starting up. So this would be more in effect if we were using things, if we were using the POP protocol instead of the uh, IM, uh, IMAP protocol. I nearly said the IMDB protocol there, and that's as funny as that is. No. Um, so forwarded mes uh, messages are. If we just look uh, at composi composition, even um, so, basically, if choose how uh, forwarded messages appear, so whether that's uh, actually in the email or as a separate attachment, then we could then give that. And then, of course, it'd be add extension to a file name if it was as an attachment. 
Uh, auto save emails every five minutes. If we've made changes and didn't come back to it, you can then increase that to as many or as few minutes as you wanted to. Uh, add link previews, pasting URLs. That's always a good thing to be able to see. Uh, we've also got check spelling before sending, enable spell checks type, you know, so general email stuff. Uh, languages, if we wanted to, um, mine should be in English UK, not English US. As we can see, this is why it's worth going in and having a look around, making sure you've got what you want. Uh, default colors, just basically coloring stuff and sending format. If no styling is used in the message, send plain text, otherwise send HTML with plain text fallback. So basically just, ah oh yes, this is how it's to be interpreted on the other end. Nah, that's fine. Uh, check for missing attachments. So if you say, I have attached something, it'll go, hey. Um, uh, as you can see here, attachment, attach, attached, attaching, and close CV cover letter. So if any one of those words appear, but there isn't actually anything attached, it will go, hey, you said this was going to appear. Where is it? That's always actually pretty good to have. Uh, again, moving on to the privacy and security sections, uh, allow remote contents or basically images from another provider. Um, so things like uh, something from LinkedIn or Google APIs or Amazon uh, AWS for some reason, uh, they will automatically show Whenever you look at something for the first time that doesn't have permission, it'll go, hey, um, this doesn't, you've not accepted the permissions for this to show up. Do you want to change that? It's up to you whether you want to or not. Um, Thunderbird can remember passwords for all your accounts. We're not even going to touch that because we want this to be email client only. Um, data, junk settings, this is how it deals with it. It's entirely up to you. Um, no, Thunderbird, I will not allow you to collect it. This is something I like. Thunderbird does not automatically collect data. That's good. We don't want to give the data, of course. If we wanted to, we could. But in this case, no. Um, scan uh, can analyze messages for suspected email scams by looking at common techniques. Tell me if the message I'm reading is suspected scams. Basic protection. Um, Thunderbird can make it easy for any virus to uh, analyze incoming mail uh, for basically just is this a virus in the email if the answer is yes or no then change it that's just standard stuff um so, so basically if we wanted to have end-to-end -end encryption with emails um this is how we do it uh chat, chat functionality for uh, the chat feature inside of thunderbird which should be that and then of course we could just export this to thunderbird mobile so everything we've done here would appear then in our, would appear on phone, if we wanted to do that. Of course, we've got chat functionality. We you don't have a chat account, so we're leaving that alone because we don't want that. It, here's where our calendars would be if we ha had uh, enabled it and set it up, but we haven't, so we're gonna leave that alone. Again, another calendar there, that would be to-do list. And this would be your actual calendar, uh, contact list, and then that's it, as we can see here, it's downloading message 8,540 of 15,714. I had no clue I had that many. I don't know. Uh, view, we can change how things are. We can add a menu bar if we wanted it. Uh, filtering if we wanted it. Um, spaces. We'll leave that there. And then just the status toolbar, which is actually rather useful in my opinion just having it there at the bottom of the screen just so you can have a look at things um so we could change the font size if we fancied it i'm just going to put that back down to where it was we'll stick with 12 um add on some themes so basically if you wanted to change the theming around and as we can see here the dark firefox uh theming is the standard one um if we did uh xp um just Ow. Yeah, no thanks. We're just going to walk away from that. Um, basically, add extensions, minimize, and close. So, in my case, the answer is no. Go away. So, that would be you know, this video. Just quick little proof that, yes, I am indeed using Windows. Uh, not Windows. I, I am indeed using Linux because, yes. Anyway, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike. They both seem to work, even though you can only see one of them. 
Remember, when you use Linux, do not panic. I have been Nick, you have been amazing, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.